I never got into weed. I know, sounds weird given my occupation. I guess it just never gave me a good laugh. I just hope it worked on Dad when he... I can only imagine, because I wasn't there, busy pursuing my MBA, but Clyde was. In fact, he started growing because of Dad's condition. Dad hated things that would go to waste. So, after Clyde's only client left the market, the only logical thing was to turn it into a business opportunity. And he considered me a businessman. He got me setting lights, buying soil, watering plants. Imagine me with my unfittingly soft hands knee-deep in cow manure, training plants for better yields. Then imagine this businessman standing on the street, dealing the cheapest weed to some vagrants. But quickly dawned on me, our venture was a business all along. There was demand, supply, product, customers with various needs. Learn what they need and supply them with your product. The demand will follow. Adjust the price, boom, profit. Basics of economy. Soon enough, I swapped my shit shovel for a spreadsheet to a lot of contempt from my hippie brother. I was the brain, focusing on the incomes and expenses and fine-tuning our process. He was the heart, all about fine-tuning the product itself. Buying new equipment, expanding our cultivation space, figuring out the right conditions and nutrition for specific strains. Our customers loved it. They'd noticed the difference, and soon, we had a following. Unfortunately, that included a bunch of boys in blue as well. We ventured into a dangerous territory and started to take precautions. I started wrapping my head around ways to conceal our production. Take care of the smell, reduce heat and energy consumption. When it wasn't enough, we had to get creative. We hid our cultivation room behind the facades of laundries, tea rooms, and restaurants. Clyde took care of the most persistent individuals the old school way, the good old bribe and blackmail. I was trying to remain in befriend and barbecue zone, Still got some of the boys on Facebook. We got so big, Clyde suggested expansion. For unknown reasons, he insisted on exploring either Boulder or Fargo. Then it hit me. I came to terms with Dad's death, and I think Clyde's heart was still secretly bleeding. He was ready to follow the opportunities provided by medicinal marijuana. Soon enough, we were setting up research centers that I thought were designed to create optimal growing conditions. But Clyde got that space-grade equipment for crossbreeding, trying to discover the next big medical strain. Truth be told, my business mind was not on board. At first, I was up for the task, but when he started talking madness of almost giving it up for free, my businessman sense started tingling. When he was on his world-saving spree, I put everything in a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet that would help us evenly split our company so he could do whatever the hell he wanted. But a company needs both its mind and its heart. A heart open to the others. And that's what Clyde did. It all started with this one guy. Same age as our dad, suffering from terminal cancer. He couldn't get the medication he wanted and the pain was literally killing him. Unless he got it from us. And that was the tip of the iceberg. Clyde realized the potential and in the blink of an eye, we were running a special service allowing people with special needs to order products directly from us. Some of their stories were heartbreaking. How did I take it? I was a businessman, freaking weed tycoon. We had money, multiple operations in several states, a committed team. Was I to sacrifice all of this to help those in need? Hell no. We had all means to do it, and all the means to do it right. So we did. And that's when everything really started. It opened up new opportunities. We were even discussing taking New York and going fully legal. Did we do it? Well, would you?